Hello and welcome to the spring edition of Sidelines. I'm Jimmy Johnson. We hope you enjoyed all the basketball tournament action while we're gone. And we're glad to have you back for the home stretch here in the 2010-11 season. With the spring championships looming at the end of April, teams are already beginning to jostle for playoff spots. One of the teams that shouldn't have any trouble finding a playoff spot is the Army men's lacrosse team. Ranked ninth in the nation, they have been led by attackman Jeremy Boltus. Army's Rick Johnson met up with the high-scoring cadet for this feature story. This past week, senior Jeremy Boltus joined some exclusive company. He became just the third player in the 94-year history of Army lacrosse to tally 100 career assists. It was very special. I mean, uh, I also got to give credit to all the guys that put the ball in the back of the net when uh, I gave him the gave him the, give him the passes. But uh, you know, like I said before, just the, the the rich tradition and history that this program has to be only the third guy to to do that to cross that mark. Uh, it really means something to me, and I'll cherish it. After being named a third-team preseason All-American by Inside Lacrosse, defenses have been sure to key in on Boltus. But the Baldwinsville, New York native says he's adjusted to the added attention. I remember I, I did press a little bit against UMass. You know, I was out of my realm, and uh, I didn't really play well. But um, you know, these past couple of games, I just let it let it come to me. Let the you know make your make your plays you have to make. You know, make the as coach says, make the make the singles instead of the home runs. A lot of the time, you know, and whatever I can do to to benefit the team. I mean, that's what I'm ultimately here to do. Boltus has also gained national recognition after being named to both the Tawarton Trophy and Inside Lacrosse's Player of the Year watch lists. Head coach Joe Alberici says his co-captain's traits off the field are just as important as his production on the field. He's a very good leader. I think he's a, a, a guy that um, I have full confidence in and, and uh, trust uh, in him that uh, you know, what we're looking to accomplish um, is what will get accomplished and and uh, you know he just is he's he's very uh, coachable guy um, he's a guy that um, is an unselfish player and uh, again is, is somebody who understands the game that, and and can help other players get better the sixth year head coach also says he and Bolt share one passion outside the game of lacrosse one of the things I, I love about Jeremy is uh, uh, he and I are um, uh, akin in this is that uh, I mean we love sports I mean he can talk sports uh, all day long and uh, um, I, I tell him he was easy he, he would be uh, his GPA would go up a full half a point if he could just turn off uh, you know the hockey game or the basketball game or this game or that game or another but uh, I love that about him and um, you know again just such an enjoyable person to be around um, and uh, is uh, just a tremendous person. With all of the accolades bestowed on it, Boltus has remained focused on the team's goals, which to no surprise revolve around the postseason. No one plays for, you know, just making the tournament, so we're hoping, you know, we got Patriot League tournament, make that, host it, you know, defend Mikey Stadium, be undefeated in uh, Mikey Stadium, uh, have the seniors go out on top, and also, uh, you know, Patriot League champs, it's one of our main goals, but um, to make the NCAAs and to make a deep run, you know, we think we have the the talent and you know just the, the team that, that can do it this year so we're uh, we're not going to set anything less as the black knights hone in on their patriot league foes number two in the black golden gray is sure to be a catalyst for their success with the army lacrosse team rick johnston itt night vision boltus and the black knights have a big matchup this saturday when they travel to hamilton new york to face the colgate raiders at 1 p.m both squads are 2-0 in the Patriot League and they'll look to keep pace with the number 17 Bucknell Bison, who also are 2-0 in the Patriot League. In cross-country track and field, there's a coach whose time at his school doubles the years that the Patriot League has been in existence. I'm talking about Holy Cross coach Jim Cavanaugh, who was in his 40th season of coaching with the Crusaders. It was recently announced that the 1968 Boston College graduate will be inducted into the Holy Cross Athletic Hall of Fame. Holy Cross's Bob Foraker sat down with the coach to talk about the honor. Here's the story. Hi, I'm Bob Foraker here on GoHolyCross.com and joining me now is a man who was just inducted into the Holy Cross Athletic Hall of Fame as an honorary and that is the head coach of track and field in cross country, Jim Cavanaugh. Jim, congratulations. Thank you very much, Bob. This certainly was something I had not ever anticipated. 
uh, and it is a fantastic honor for both myself and my family. Um, and certainly the Hall of Fame at Holy Cross means a ton to everyone. But myself being from Boston College, this is a very special tribute. It certainly is, and you brought up Boston College. I didn't, so there. Forty years, that's a lifetime almost. I know you've had so many great athletes go through, but what are some of the highlights? I think there are many highlights, depending on which phase of my career you want to talk about. Uh, certainly when I first came here, there were athletic grants, and um, the first ten years that I was at Holy Cross, we took someone to the national championships in eight out of those ten years. So certainly with the elite athlete, that was a memorable time. Uh, that's when you're talking about a 404 miler and somebody running 151 and a half mile, uh, someone throwing 61 feet like David Morrison in the uh, weight throw. Since then, I think what has really sparked my interest and what actually has kept me at a place like Holy Cross is the balance that the kids have for their academics and their athletics. Uh, I think it would be very hard to find another place that does it as well as Holy Cross does. Jim, it's been a great ride, hasn't it? It's been phenomenal. It really has been. Uh, a lot of changes have taken place at Holy Cross since I've been here. Um, I think within our team, uh, my whole purpose for coming here in the first place was to work on the field event aspect of track and field. Uh, certainly when I competed against Holy Cross, uh, they were primarily middle distance runners with relay teams and cross country. And our mission was to open it up to developing the throwing events and the jumpers. And uh, we certainly, I think, have done a pretty good job of that. You've done a superlative job. Congratulations. And Thank today you, you're going to be inducted into the Holy Cross Athletic Hall of Fame. My special guest, head coach of track and field, here, Jim Cavanaugh. I'm Bob Forica. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Bob. Now let's go down to the river for a season preview on the Bucknell rowing team. Bucknell's Doug Birdsong has this story. Today, we're in the herd with rowing. Bucknell opened its season this past weekend at the Murphy Cup, and head coach Steve Kish says it was a very good weekend. The freshman four uh, came in second. Uh, the varsity four raced Navy to the line. Um, the 2V uh, was second overall. And uh, the 1V had a tough time. Uh, we're struggling a little bit, but we'll figure things out. We've got about four weeks to go. One of the leaders of the number one varsity eight boat is Carol Schonecker. She says she's never felt such a connection with a boat before. Obviously lineups can change, but I've never felt so close to the team in general. And it's, I'm so excited to see what's going to happen. Like it's so exciting because we're just starting out and we're going to go so much faster and everyone's going to push each other to go faster. Kish says Schonecker is probably the toughest student athlete he has ever coached. What she's dealt with physically over, over three years and now four years is, is, um, it's hard to compare to anything other than a, a, a football player that struggles to get out of bed every morning. Uh, she's, she's one tough cookie. What Sean Ecker has gone through includes the painful, a dislocated shoulder, to the unbelievable, being bitten by a squirrel, to the unfathomable, two separate bouts with malaria, which she contracted on a trip abroad to Ghana, where she found a newfound sense of what hardship is really like. Little things like getting out of bed at 5.40 in the morning. My host family got up at 4 o'clock every morning. And, you know, third, they had six kids. They couldn't eat three meals a day. They couldn't afford to send all of their kids to school. It was just the little things that we take for granted. So getting up at 5.40 and practicing and then having another practice in the afternoon is really nothing in comparison to how they live. And it's just everyday life for them. They don't think that they're any less fortunate than I am. She does say she feels her experiences could help pay off for her teammates. Each injury just makes me push harder because on the, on the team, like our very nature in general is like if my teammates see me pushing through it, they'll push through it too. And it's like a comfort, a reassurement type of deal for them as well as for myself. So it makes me stronger. It makes the team stronger. And once she graduates, she says she would love to go back to Africa. So I would love to see like Kenya in West Africa versus East Africa and see the differences in that. So I'm really not that picky. That's our show for this week. We have plenty more spring coverage coming up in the next couple weeks, so be sure to come back to All Access for another new episode of Sidelines. 
Remember, you can always find us on Twitter and Facebook and also on the web at PatriotLeague.com. Have a great week.